be that the current leadership of Iran, which is a, a mad purist, uh, Islamic fantasist, that uh, would say, well, you know, we can get to heaven in a mad apocalyptic uh, apocalypse where millions die on both sides, a, a disappeared uh, imam, a religious holy man from uh, about a thousand years ago would reappear. Millions would die on both sides, but the millions, the Islamic millions, would go to a Islamic heaven with, uh, with all the trimmings. And, you know, that's not a bad heaven for them. All right, folks, so welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. I play that soundbite because I think that soundbite from uh, Benjamin Netanyahu when he was between uh, prime ministerships, if you will, uh, of Israel, he was appearing on the Bill Maher Show uh, several years ago. I think that cut cuts to the core of uh, the, 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 what our next guest uh, wrote about in a recent column uh, for the Las Vegas Review Journal and wrote about in his great book, The Control Factor, which I'm holding in my hand right here. We welcome in uh, Bill Siegel. Hello, Bill. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure, sir. Great to talk to you, and this is a long overdue. Um, what, what, what struck me about the column uh, is that, you know, we're so focused and the media is so focused and, the, you know, what we talk about on this show and others about the weapons and nuclear weapons and we can't have a nuclear Iran. And, uh, and your piece addresses what is really, in my view, and I'm, I think yours, I don't want to put words in your mouth, the heart of Iran, who they are, and that's their constitution. Uh, and, and so let's talk about that. Because what you found out by, by looking at their constitution is, is, is I won't say m more disturbing than, than the, the weapons, but equally as disturbing, certainly. And when you put the two of them together, that's what's so frightening. I, that's exactly right, Steve. What, what the constitution reveals, I called it the, uh, the regime's real critical position paper on the issue, is that if you couple it with nuclear weapons, that's a disaster we cannot survive. This uh, constitution, which was written during the Khomeini revolution, outlines a revolution, and it still applies. This revolution is explained in the constitution. It's global. It's offensive as much as it's defensive. And it's driven by what it calls Islamic criteria, which is to fight the war. In one of the translations, they use the word, the phrase, holy war. We in America try to cover that up and pretend it doesn't exist, but uh, it's, it is a war document. And, uh, you know, we can go through it, or I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I mean, talk about some of the, the, a couple of the things that struck you uh, the most that when you, when you trans got the translation done, that, that raised uh, the, the, the biggest, uh, you know, uh, red flags. Well, let me read you a few. Sure. Uh, accordingly, the Army of the Islamic Republic and the Revolutionary Guards are to be organized in conformity with this goal, and they will be responsible not only for guarding and preserving the frontiers of the country, but also for fulfilling the ideological mission of jihad, or holy war, in God's way. That is, extending the sovereignty of God's law throughout the world. This is in accordance with the Quranic verse, prepare against them whatever force you are able to muster, and strings of horses striking fear into the enemy of God and your enemy, and others besides them. Uh, the last sentence of the preamble talks about, uh, it says, this was done with the hope that this century, and remember that's the last century, will witness the establishment of a universal holy government and the downfall of all others. So, and that, that's, of course, uh, spreading, uh, you know, radical Islam, if I'm interpreting it correctly, uh, uh, you know, one big caliphate of, uh, around the world. And, 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 more, and, and it goes without saying, but we should say it, at the expense of all existing governments and religions. Absolutely. It talks about, you know, it describes the final goal as the world's movement towards Allah. This is their constitution. This is not the writings of some uh, lunatic on the side that we can dismiss. This is the basis. The government, is, the regime is a revolutionary regime. 
and this fantasy that uh, Hassan Rouhani is something different, that he's uh, creating a change and will turn around the country and uh, make them into a uh, mature and uh, mutually acceptable uh, government in the world community is our fantasy. Right, and of course, it's even even if you before I read this story and before I, you know it was it, it became to my attention uh, the, the the fantasy that this man is a, is a moderate that this man could have been elected as a moderate when it's the Ayatollahs who approved the presidential candidates in the first place. He's playing a good game. He's acting different than his predecessor, but in reality, this man, is his history and everything about him, uh, for anyone who wants to see it, he's no moderate. Absolutely. He was, when Khomeini originally took over, Rouhani was a founding member of uh, the security and intelligence sources. He was uh, related to uh, student uh, revolt crushings and uh, smashing down of the unions. Since he's been in power, there have been close to 400 executions. They've uh, been, again, crushing trade unions. And, but more importantly, despite what he may say or what uh, um, Javad Zarif may, may uh, make themselves out to be, Rouhani recently was quoted as demanding, quote, a more resolute campaign against the enemies of revolution. So he's not quelling the revolution. Right. He's stepping it forward. But Bill, he did he ever build a settlement in disputed territory? Because that's real evil, as, as you know. We're talking to Bill Siegel. Uh, he is the author of The Control Factor, Our Struggle to See the True Threat. And, and this, this fits in so wonderfully, and I think it's why I, I think I picked a pretty decent cut from Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, because I think it, it addresses uh, it, everything you wrote in the piece, as I said, and everything you wrote in, in the book, to some extent. Because in the book, you talk about how you know, we have to recognize the threat, accept the threat, understand the threat, be willing to talk about it publicly, address our needs accordingly uh, of rad the threat being radical Islam, or there's no way to defeat it. That's absolutely true. Uh, the book, what I try to, to convey in the book is we as uh, Westerners, and particularly America, in the last few generations have very little familiarity with a threat that is truly coming after us. It's like a horror film, as I say in the book, where the whatever the evil monster is, the, the blob that ate Cincinnati, its whole basis, or raison d'etre, is our destruction. And what the horror film goes through and what I in the book try to try to explore and hope a reader will will start to sense in his own mind are all the ways that we deny the reality, turn around the uh, our perceptions. What the control factor means is that part of our minds that distorts our perception of the threat so as to leave us with the false impression that we are in control. This is uh, very much alive in our relationship with, uh, with Iran, which is based on uh, an unequal relationship. We, much like, as I say in the book, an, an addiction enabler relationship. Yeah. The addict lives by one set of rules, the enabler keeps hoping because the dirty little secret of it is we think if we can fault ourselves and, and put upon ourselves some cause for the uh, behavior of the addict that we can secretly control it. It gives us a psychological comfort. But that is just not the case Absolutely. with our Islamic enemy. We no. can't control it. It's coming at us, and we better learn to see it clearly before it's too late. And, well, and Bill, with this administration, not only is everything you said uh, valid and, 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 and uh, more of a concern than ever before, uh, but this administration has weakened our tools, weakened our ability to combat radical Islam, even on our own shores, whether it be uh, eliminating the CIA interrogation unit right off the bat, uh, whether it be, you know, where the FBI can't bring up certain buzzwords when interviewing a su suspected Muslim terrorist. Uh, uh, they can't go to mosques now and, 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 and survey and, and, sur and conduct surveillance. So they're handcuffing, we're handcuffing ourselves as a, as a country, uh, while at the same time going out of our way to not only not recognize and not talk about everything you, uh, you point out we need to talk about, but making it 
m making you or anyone who would talk about it seem out of touch, out of step, and even worse, you know, an Islamophobe or whatever they call it. <laughs> what you said is so true. In the book, I, I talk about the threat existing on three levels. We commonly think of one level as the violent jihad. And o President Obama has astutely uh, shaved our perceptions so that he makes it that the real problem is limited to al-Qaeda. And if we can uh, cure our problem with al-Qaeda, the problem goes away. Well, the violent jihad is much bigger than al-Qaeda, but it's only one of the three levels. The second and more devious level, which uh, encompasses much of what you just referred to, is, in the, in the words of the Muslim Brotherhood, the civilization jihad. It's that effort which is so alive here and so enabled by the Obama administration and partly by the Bush administration. Uh, to infiltrate our society at all levels to in their own in their own words to sabotage and ultimately bring down our civilization from by our own hand yeah yeah there's there's a third level of, of uh, which is happening I call it the international institutional jihad at the level of the UN and more importantly the OIC the organization of Islamic cooperation which seeks to, it's the largest Islamic uh, group in the world, and on issues that go across all sectarian boundaries, et cetera, like stopping any criticism of Islam, they work together, and Hillary Clinton had been a major enabler with this. Yeah. She, and that's the, the real dark story behind the video excuse for, uh, for the Benghazi attacks is Hillary was complying with the UN Resolution 1618 that she co-sponsored. She, the video excuse and all her actions of uh, criticizing it and promising to prosecute right. are all required by Resolution 16. And, and what that leads to eventually, maybe even, God forbid, in this country, is uh, uh, you know, a crackdown on freedom of speech and through freedom of right thought. There. It's all for Bill. Great conversation and a great book. It's uh, The Control Factor, Our Struggle to See the True Threat by uh, Bill Siegel, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I suggest you, uh, you get it and educate yourself uh, uh, about what you need to know. And Bill, great to talk to you, sir. We'll speak to you soon. You too, Steve. Thanks for Thank much. you. Okay, folks, we hope to have Congressman Tim Ulescamp uh, when we return. So we're going to roll the dice like we do on live TV so often and hope we come up with a seven uh, right here on the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax Television. The Steve Malzberg.